It's a hook. It's a wall hook. It's a self-adhesive wall hook, but it's a little bit different from the normal self-adhesive wall hooks because this one has a USB port on the bottom. And this was suggested by John Harrison, who found it on AliExpress. I found it on eBay and had some problems getting it from eBay because the HMRC, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, which is nothing at all to do with the Queen, uh, the tax authority in the UK had been blocking most of the people who were selling this uh, from shipping to the UK because they hadn't been getting the wee slice of the pie. Hmm, well, they got to prop their pension up somehow. So let's uh, put that out of the way. Basically speaking, this unit has a heating element in the back of it, it's got a USB port, and it appears to have a little microcontroller or dedicated chip in it. It's, it's not dumb. It does a couple of clever things. But it's got this little heating element with a blob of hot melt glue. And initially when I first got this, I thought, what are these? I, I should point out I got two. Sometimes I get two, because if I really like something, I keep on, and it seemed like a novel enough item. But uh, these little discs here are, well, let me hike one out are replacement glue pads, and they look suspiciously like someone has taken a knife and sliced a bit off a hot melt glue stick, which they probably have. So that's what those are. Is that going to go in? Mm, okay. So to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of glass here that I'm going to stick it onto, because sticking something hot and sticky onto a piece of glass sounds like a great idea. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug a USB lead into this. Now, this draws about 2 amps. I have checked that. It does draw 2 amps. Now, it said something about an LED. There is an LED. See the glowing red just down at the bottom? There is a little red LED, and that is going to light for roughly 43 seconds. And what it's actually doing now is it's heating this up. So this pad of adhesive is getting warm. And this is where we basically stand and watch this get hot. Now, I have taken the other hook apart. I couldn't resist it. I wanted to take it apart so we could take a look at the circuitry. So here is the heating element. It's a 2 ohm heating element. And then there's active circuitry in this. More about that later. Is this heating up adequately? Is it? Oh, oh, that. Don't poke hot melt glue your finger. This is why. This is why you end up getting burned. It's not that bad. Uh, is the little, oh, the LED's gone off. The LED's gone off. Hold on. That means I can now stick the hook onto a surface. It does say you should clean the surface uh, with isopropyl alcohol beforehand. Okay. Right. Let's put that out of the way. And let's take a look at this now. I could zoom down onto this. Or... I could show you the pictures that I took earlier on. That's why I took the other one apart. I should have cropped these down to get rid of the big white borders, not to worry. So here's the heating element. It does measure two ohms. I stuck the meter on one, uh, stuck the other lead on right next to it, zeroed out the leads, and then measured from side to side two ohms. And if you think of it, with the circuitry losses, Keep in mind, uh, I'll just, I'm going to remove this picture. So it does, it zigzags backwards and forwards, but it's also this nice round shape that will fit into the housing. Oh, hold on. Where is the housing? There's the housing. Uh, so uh, if we zoom down on that a little bit, you can see a housing here with uh, the residue of the glue and then the little compartment for the electronics and presumably that little dimple there was where the LED was. Hmm, okay. Let's take a look at the circuitry though. The circuitry consists of this mystery chip. And the supply comes in, and if you look at the back of the circuit board, it's actually got a, the, I think it's a positive, goes up to the uh, heating element end. It's, the, it's got a lot of uh, plated through holes to basically couple a lot of current through this. They're, they're mainly under here. I should have actually taken a photo of that side of the circuit board as well, but I didn't. Let's tame this down a bit. Let's say it's a bit ferocious. Um, so the positive rail, yes, it is the positive rail, goes through this diode, and uh, I should have actually tested this. I haven't actually tested, so I can't say this for sure. Let's grab the meter, and let's actually test this. So let's uh, put this to continuity mode. I reckon that diode is going from here to the top of this capacitor, because this capacitor is quite important. So continuity... Is it? Yes, it is. So this diode goes down to this capacitor. That provides a supply over to the chip. And the reason for the diode is because that capacitor acts like a little reservoir. 
and the, the supply, apart from going straight to the uh, there, also goes to the chip via uh, resistors. So the chip knows when the power has been turned off and on again, and this is quite important. There's a big fat transistor down here. The One of the outputs here, this output here, is coming down to a plated through hole, running along underneath to this plated through hole, and then coming to either the... Uh, I tried finding this transistor. It says A00 or A00. I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, hard to test it in circuit because you've got the... Uh, the because it's directly connected to the output of this chip, you're getting kind of diode uh, circuitry, diode connections through the chip. And also, when it comes to the load, the load is almost a dead short circuit. So quite hard testing that transistor. Uh, these two capacitors are actually in parallel. One is the little decoupling capacitor, uh, and one is the sort of reservoir capacitor. With the, uh, the decoupling capacitor has a lower impedance. It's just used to prevent glitches and things from upsetting this, the processor. There are extra pads. I'm not sure what these pads are for. It's mysterious. Anyway, when you turn this on, it powers that uh, heating element up. It turns the transistor on and powers the heating element up. The heating element is coming off here and it does it those four to five seconds to melt the glue. When you unplug the lead, it remembers that it was powered. This capacitor holds a charge, so if you try to plug it in again while it was hot, it's just going to start flashing the LED on and off. It's going to warn you that, you know, you can't do that because it's already, you know, you've already heated up. It doesn't monitor the temperature. It just works on the basis of time of this charge of this capacitor. And if you take a pair of snips and you short circuit that capacitor with the snips, uh, it will then forget it. That is effectively the memory. This big white thing is a spacer for the LED. It hides. I've removed it from uh, the circuitry here because uh, I wanted to see what, where this pad went. This sender pad from the transistor goes up uh, to uh, a cluster of plated through holes and then a thick track up to the other end. Uh, when you want to remove this hook, so let's take a look at it, it's squished. The glue has stayed more or less in the position of the little uh, sensor here. Let's take a closer look. Let's get in close to that. You can see the glue hasn't gone too far. You can see an outline here, but that is actually just a sort of joint in the case where the uh, housing came out. But the glue itself hasn't spread. It's actually stayed fairly contained around the heating element. That's quite important because when you want to remove this, let's test this. That's pretty strong. That is very strong. When you want to remove it, you plug the USB lead in once, you unplug it, you plug it in again, and it detects that it's been unplugged and plugged in again uh, in quick succession from the capacitor initially being discharged. And then the chip knows that you want it in the unmelt mode. So it knows that you want to actually remove it. And what it does is it runs for 70 seconds so I'm going to do that right now. Uh, I'm going to plug it in. If I can get the lead into this now. Keep in mind, uh, you'd be using... I'm not sure if that... Did I pull that out for too long? Let's, uh, let's see if I can uh, do that again. So if I plug it in... Oh no, you know what? It's going into, it's doing that thing. See, I've tricked it now because I applied the power and then I changed my mind and I unplugged it. It was flashing the LED there to show that it was uh, in sort of cool down mode. So uh, I'll give it a few seconds and then I'll try that again. I'm going to be very impatient. This is not going to work. Hold on. Plug it in. Unplug. Now it's flashed, it's gone out, it's lit again, and now it's started a 30 second, uh, uh, not a 30 second, a 70 second time delay. So this hook is now heating up, but it's heating up a bit longer to allow for the fact that it's stuck to a surface, so it's actually compensating for the heat dissipation through that surface. So that uh, little red LED, once it goes out, theoretically I can pull that hook off that glass. Time will tell if this happens. I have to say, when I was uh, testing it, and the first time I tested it, I was just holding it out in open air. And the glue, the residual glue, went so molten it started smoking uh, and dripping off it. That's only because I didn't have it on in the original position where the, the glue would have been actually spreading the heat and also coupling it to the housing to a degree. But uh, 
so for the when I tested it, when I was doing the time test on this to actually unstick it, I actually put it under water to actually cool it. Just the heating element bit to stop it doing that again because uh, it got quite hot and flustered. The LED is still lit. It's still in the process of ungluing from that piece of glass. Other things where they have no, not that many. The only thing I'm not quite sure about is these capacitors up here, but I get the feeling that maybe, uh, resistor should I say, this resistor I think is for the LED, this resistor is the one that's actually telling it uh, that the power has been interrupted. Oh, that is, that has now, got, now gone out. Uh, right, you know, I was hoping it was going to come off a bit neater than that. Right. <laughs> oh, that's not clean. But the third resistor, I think, might be for a timing uh, programming ability. So can this, uh, it does say, you know, clean the surface afterwards. I don't think I'd recommend using this on nice surfaces and wallpaper. It does suggest using isopropyl alcohol to dissolve or just, I don't know. Uh, apparently, isopropyl alcohol doesn't have an effect. It can uh, release uh, hot melt glue. But in this case, yeah. That, that wasn't what I'd call a nice, clean departure. I was kind of expecting it to be some miracle glue that all neatly comes off and stays stuck to the heating element, but um, no, it's left a huge big splish all over the glass. That's not so great. But having said that, it kind of worked. Kind of glad I didn't try it in the wall and wallpaper now. Oh well. So um, that that's more or less it. I did look up this number. I could not find what this is. I think it's either a little microcontroller or a custom chip. Not sure. I'm guessing microcontroller. It makes sense. And the circuitry, other than that, is very, very simple. It's got that transistor for switching. It's got the main memory reservoir capacitor. It's got the decoupling capacitor just across the pins just to uh, make the chip stable. It's got the diode to provide isolation with the supply to the memory capacitor. It's got the LED resistor, it's got the uh, the resistor that uh, goes to one of the input pins to tell it, you know, that the power's been interrupted. And the other one may well be um, to do with, I would guess, timing. They may be able to adjust it for different type of materials. It may just be a fine-tuning thing, but that is a wild guess. So other than that, you know, it's, it's an interesting concept. I've never come across that before. Uh, and it kind of works, but uh, but may leave a big skid mark on your wall. So there you go. That's my conclusion.